the Bible says that that day that Jesus was born, the angels looked over the balcony of heaven and they cried, glory, glory, yeah. glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, goodwill, all me. His name is Jesus. Jesus is his name. There is none like him. He is God's only unique son. Only the God son. His name is his name is Jesus. We've come to worship him today. Amen. We have come to lift him up for what he has already done. Was on a hill called Calvary that he gave his life for you and for me. Rose from the dead. His name is Jesus. Call your attention to the Old Testament. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Verse number 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Verse number 8. When you found it, you will discover these words. The end of a thing is better than its beginning. The patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. I want to talk about the end. The end. Talk about the end. When we look at life around us, every day we're reminded one of these days the stamp will be upon our lives that says the end. birthday, we celebrate it, April 15, 1963, in Vernon, Mississippi, Mathis and Rosie Davis gave birth to a bouncing baby boy. They were happy that day. They were just so excited. Daddy was excited because it was a boy. Mama was excited because birth pains were over. If my brother, brothers and my sister would tell you that this oldest child came out as the ugliest thing on planet Earth, My brothers and my sister would tell you, boy, you were so hairy that you looked like a monkey. If they were here today, they would tell you, because they remind me regularly, that no one wanted to look at you but mama, and she was trying to find out how to get rid of you. Because you were one ugly thing. The issue I have with that, Brother Miles, is that because I'm the oldest, they weren't even here to see me. And if they were to take that testimony to court, the judge would deem it as hearsay and would tell the jury, disregard what they just said. But as I look at their lives, I can testify 
that I was there when they were born. And if I use my sanctified imagination, I can paint them any color, any description I want to. Because unlike them, I was there. But from a realistic standpoint, mama and daddy were just as excited about them showing up as they were about me showing up. But the text declares that the beginning is not as important as the end. The ecclesiastic writer, he says that there's a time for everything. He says there's a time to live, there's a time to die. There's a time to laugh and there's a time to moan. The ecclesiastic writer says that there's a time to, to have joy and there's a time to be sad. The writer even says that it takes wisdom for you to know when to be happy and when to be sad. Have you ever been a place where, where everybody was looking like they were concerned and then Uncle Bobo shows up? And he kind of lights up the party. You see, my Uncle Bobo was Uncle Ted. And when Uncle Ted showed up, he was shut down the party, everybody having fun, everybody doing what we do, and everybody's enjoying it. And when somebody's car drives up, Ted steps out and they say, oh, Lord, the party is over. Uncle Ted knew how to come to a family reunion and put the stamp, the end, Ted is here. When I took Sister Davis home for the first time, Uncle Ted greeted her with a derringer. And he began to question her with a two-shot derringer. And that was his introduction. Uncle Ted knew how to put a stamp on it, said the end. And he knew something about the Bible, and he would always contest you on the Bible. Now, Monday through Thursday, Ted didn't say anything to anybody. He was quiet. He sat there. He watched whatever he watched. He he went to work. He was faithful. But when Friday at 5 p.m. hits, the quietness was all over. Ted didn't drive a car. Ted didn't have to drive a car. He, he went from one house to the other. And he didn't go to their house at 5 p.m. He'll catch a ride. He'll stop by the, the spirit store on the way home. And when he stopped by the spirit store, he would get somebody to drop him off at home, and he would sit there and get full of his spirits. And then he would begin his walk. By the time it gets dark, he's walking down the street, and police knew him, neighbors knew him, and Uncle Ted would stop the first car, and he wasn't concerned about them misusing him. He said, take me to Inverness. He'd take him to Inverness and get the Inverness. He would get out the car, knock on the Anderson's door, and say, look, come take me home. And on, your way, on his way home, he said, no, take me to Isola, which is a whole different direction. And he would knock on that door. What y'all doing in here? He would eat their food, and he would look at the man of the house and say, take me home. On the way home from Isola back to Indianola, Uncle Ted said, hey, drop me off at Miss Effie May's house around the corner. And Miss Effie May didn't have a car, so he would go to her house and eat. And after he got through eating there, he would walk down the street and he would knock on a man's house that had a car. He said, look, take me home. But when the man gets ready to take him home, he said, take me to Yazoo City. 
which is another 50 miles in the other direction. In many houses he would get to, it would be 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 1 a.m. in the morning, and everybody looked out for him. If he stumbled and fell, they'd pick him up and put him back in his car. When he did finally get home at 6 a.m. the next day, he would lay there in the den because that's the only place he could make it. He had a stamp that said, the end. When he woke up the next morning, he chased that one with another spirit. He started walking again, and he did that Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday, he began to calm down for Monday morning. Kept the full-time job. One time he went to work and the man fired him and the owner came back and picked him up because he was the best welder they had. Next time he goes in, about five years later, he goes in drunk. The, the new supervisor fires him. The owner jumps on him and go pick, tell him to go pick him up and bring him back. One day, made my last trip home to visit Uncle T because God had put a stamp on it. And the stamp said, the end. I say to you today, God has brought us 365, 364 and a half days. God has been faithful to us. God has blessed us beyond measure. God has blessed us when we didn't even deserve it. God blessed us through our line on COVID. Let me say it to this side. God has blessed us through our line on COVID. God has been so merciful to us until folk all around us were dying by the thousands. And God kept his hand on us for the last four years, God has kept his hand on us, and folk were dying. The, 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 psalmist, the psalmist would tell you, folk died and never died before. Folk was dying around us. You could not get an appointment with the undertaker because people were dying so fast. Young folk walking right along, dropping dead. Season sinks with, with no ailments. Go to sleep and never wake up. Muscle-bound men that stay in the gym could not breathe through it and they had to go under a ventilator and never came out. It does not matter what you wear. The end is coming. It doesn't matter whether your purse has a CK on it, a BL on it. It doesn't matter if you wear chick jeans, 501s. I know I'm dating myself. It doesn't matter if you wear ringless or not. Sooner or later, there will going to be a stamp that says the end. You see, one of these days, you're going to pick up a program if you stay around here longer. And it's going to say, celebrating the life and legacy of Matthew Alexander Davis. And Sister Davis is going to make sure the program looks good. She's going to make sure that every picture is in the right place. And if it's not in the right place, whoever the printer is is going to have to trash that whole thousand group of programs and start over again. I said, well, this, this is going to cost you a lot of money. It doesn't matter what it costs. This picture ought to be over here, and this one is too dark, and this one is too light. And it's going to be a, a date on it. It's going to say, the first date is going to say April 15th, 1993. 
April 15, 1963 will be the first day. There is going to be an ending date that I can't prophesy right now. It could be December 31st, 2023. But those two dates are guaranteed because that's the way we do things in America. But there's a separation in those two dates. And that separation, Brother Irvin, is a dash. Matter of fact, matter of fact, the first date was important to mama, dad, and me. But the last date is important to God. But what's most important to God is neither date. What is important to God is the dash that sits in the middle of those two days. The question that I have today, what is in your dash? What have you accomplished this year? What will you accomplish from one dash to the other dash? What would you accomplish if God gave you another 20 years? What have you accomplished this year? There's a dash for all of us. But the fact of the matter is, there's a moment where you will see the end. You need to make sure that that your the end has something that you've accomplished. You need to make sure that in your dash, you treated people right. You need to make sure in your dash that you hadn't been mean all your life. You have to make sure in your dash that you hadn't stole and not ask, have stolen and not ask for forgiveness. You need to make sure that in your dash, you treat your parents right. Oftentimes, say to young people, young people, there'll come a time in your life where it's time for parents to stop taking care of you, and it's time for you to take care of your parents. The dash is important today. The dash is so important today until we've been whisked out of here. We've been rushed out of here. If I was to take a poll in this room and ask you, do you know any person who left here in the last five years who was under the age of 15, people all over this room and online would raise their hands? Because we all know somebody that got out of here in what we call an untimely moment. Folks, folks say stuff like this, you're going to be on earth all the days that the Lord has for you. But the Bible doesn't say that. As I was preparing for this one verse, I stumbled upon the words that says, you can rush your time. You can, you can get in a hurry to die. The Bible says the first, the first, the first law that says that you can, that, that comes with promise and says that you can live somewhat of a long time is the fact that the promise of God is that, that you can honor your father and your mother and your days will be long upon the land which the Lord thy God has given you. I hear it regularly. I know I'm going to live to be a hunter because I honored my parents growing up. I hear it regularly. I, the reason why I'm blessed is because I have blessed others. The reason why I am living my best life now is because of what I have done. But let me tell you, it doesn't matter how much you do, you can't earn the glory, the blessings that God has given you. God is just such a kind God. God is such a gracious God. God is such a merciful God that we get to sit on three-inch cushion seats. 
We get to walk on expensive carpet. We get to look at walls where if there happened to be a chip, it's painted overnight. We get to choose where we worship. We can drive across town or walk out the door because there's a church on nearly every corner. We don't have to worry about any militia coming in here and telling us we can't worship. We live in the great United States of America where God has his hands on us right now. The jury is still out as to how long the Lord is going to have his hand on us. Because the Bible teaches that God keeps his hand on the righteous. God blesses those who, who deals righteously with God. God is able to bless us in spite of us, in spite of our meanness, in spite of our conditions. God just keeps blessing us. And in the last four years, God has blessed us in spite of our laziness. We've gotten so comfortable. We, we've gotten comfortable. We, how many of you have gotten comfortable? How many of us have gotten so comfortable, we just so comfortable, we too comfortable to say, Lord, I thank you. And don't ask me to go to the house where I got to put something on other than my pajamas. We've gotten so comfortable and God is still blessing us. We've gotten, we've gotten so comfortable until every little thing hurts us. When we get so comfortable with God, we begin to disrespect him. I dare say in the last 364, 365 days, we've received so much comfort until we don't even want to hear the preaching. Paul says that this day was coming. Paul says like this, the day will come Timothy, that they will not endure sound doctrine, but they will give in to fables. They would rather hear a lie than rather hear the truth. They want you to tickle their ears. And I tell you, my dad, today, dear, my dear, today, it, that day is here. Don't mess with my thing, preacher. This is my thing. And the songwriter told me, it's my thing and I can do what I want to do. Burger King said to me the other day that uh, I can have it my way. Frank Sinatra said, I did it my way. I just stopped by on my way to the rapture to let you know you cannot do it your way and expect God to handle you with blessings any old way. When we think about the word the end. We think about the word the end. We're sitting and we're watching a good movie. And the movie just shuts down at a stage that we think is the middle of it and it's really getting ready to get good. And all of a sudden, credits start rolling up. And we wonder, we spend our money for no conclusion? Because we're used to the movie having a plot. We're used to the movie having a layout, a form. We look at look look for the movie to have the key characters in it, and every character is going to have some suspense or, or some horror or something. And let me just stop right here. Most of us has no, have no business celebrating Halloween and horror movies. I can't afford it. I've been scared enough. I grew up at a time where they were scaring folks. I have been scared enough. I don't pay money to watch horror movies. So when the credits start rolling up, all of a sudden this big word, these big words, bigger than anything else on the screen, says the end. And it says that we're not, we're not ready for it. It says that, that we weren't prepared for the end like this. 
And then we call our friends that went and saw the movie before we saw it, and they were talking about how good the movie was, but the movie didn't have an end on it, didn't have a tail on it, and did not close properly. And now I got a, I got a bone with you because I just spent $35 to watch a movie that had no conclusion, and you told me it was a good movie? And all of a sudden, I'm looking at these words, the end. Life is just like that, my dear. You can make your plans. Your plans can be plans that you're going to do these things today. The Bible teaches that don't say what I'm going to accomplish today. Don't say what I'm going to do today. You ought to say, if it's the Lord's will. Growing up, I used to, I thought, I thought the senior saints were just making this stuff up. They were speaking Bible talk. You ought to, you ought to say, I'm going to accomplish these things today. And as you sit down tonight and write your New Year's resolution, before you put number one down, write, write on it. 2024 New Year's resolution right under there say, if the Lord is willing. And then you write number one, number two, number three, number four. And I want to serve you notice today, don't wait till the new year to set a resolution up. Don't wait till the new year to start changing your life as it is today. Because there is no guarantee that you're going to make January 1, 2024. You see, the God we serve is such an awesome, amazing, sovereign God until he does whatever he wants to do when he wants to do it. And it really de it doesn't make sense to us. It doesn't make sense to babies, for babies that are sleeping in their crib to die from a gunshot wound from some stupid person outside. It doesn't make sense for a man to be riding his bicycle down the road and, and he's off in the bike lane and all of a sudden you see two little teenagers riding in a car behind him and they move so far over in the lane until they put this man right in the middle of the truck. And they videotaped it. And they ran over him and killed him. All he's doing is taking his morning ride, and, and all of a sudden, he feels a push and a thug from the back and never knew what hit him. That got my attention, y'all. The fact is, he's minding his business, and then these two little thugs decided they're going to brag about it. One thing about criminals, young folk, they are the dumbest folk in the world. They videotape their own dirt. Not only do they videotape it, they tell all of their little friends who can't keep a secret about nothing. And then if they don't tell their friends, they post it on social media. And they laugh about it. And then when they get arrested, he says, well, I'm 16 and I'll be out in 30 days. And that too got back to the judge. The Bible says we must have wisdom in this dash. We must operate in a way where we look forward to the end. The text, the text is clear. As we start in verse number one, it says that a good name is rather to be chosen than precious ointments. You ought to have, you ought to keep a good name. Dad has said, when you get back to this house, I want my name clean. A good name is rather to be chosen than silver and gold. Rather to be chosen more than precious ointments. Rather to be chosen other than your pride. You ought to have a good name. Church folk need good names. If your friends get surprised when, they, when you tell them you're going to church, you got a problem. If they ask you, God, you go to church. You've been having a problem a long time. It trips me out when I, I walk in a room and people recognize me, right? And they walk up to me and say, say, hey, this is my pastor. I ain't seen him for six years. 
Hey, this is my pastor. I just smile and say, hello, how you doing? But that thing in the back of my head, my calculator is like 36 months, 48 months, 60 months, and I'm still her pastor. Woman comes to me and say, hey, hey, I met your member the other day at the beauty shop. I said, what's the member name? And they called the member name. And I said, it's been 12 years since I've seen her. I haven't even seen her in funerals. A good name is important. I know, I know people can say whatever they want to say about you. I know sticks and stones may break your bones, but words will never hurt you. But why are you always mad about what somebody said? Yeah. The text declares a good name is better than precious ointments. It's better than silver and gold. It's better in a lot than a lot of money. Because guess what? We grew up on the plantation and got food because of mom and daddy's name. My daddy was a sharecropper, and we went to town every two weekends. So that means we skipped the weekend, young people. And we stayed on the plantation and we worked. We stayed on Mr. Dewey Wayne King's plantation. And every two weeks, we'll get a ride up to Inverness or a ride to Bells on it. You know, dad and mama swift, switched it up every other month so it looked like we're going somewhere. When I went back to school after the summer, they, people were talking about, oh, I went to Dallas. I went, I didn't, only Dallas I saw was when I looked at it on TV. Matter of fact, when I came to Houston at the age of 22, I knew nothing to expect. I got stuck in traffic in the dark at night on 59, and I was amazed. I said, ooh, all those lights make it look like it's Christmas, and it was January. It's because we thought everybody else lived where we lived. We lived. We thought J.R. Ewing was in another country. But we had a good name. We had, we had a name that we could go up to the I know this is a derogatory word in the 21st century, but we would go to the Chinaman store. And we would look at Mr. T or whatever his name was, and we would say to him that mama told me to come and put this on her tab. And he would go back there and cut the salami. The hog head sauce. He would cut it. He would wrap it. He would ask the question, how many pounds does Miss Rosie need? He would tell him she wants five pounds of hog head cheese. She, she wants 10 pounds of salami, and we will go back to the country. We never, as children, had to wonder where money came from. Maybe that's why children today think that their parents got money trees in the backyard. But it's because of our parents' names. And they paid on time, and they didn't have to run them down, and they didn't have to argue about how much they owed. It's because they carried a good name. He goes on to say that it is better to, to live in a house of mourning than in a house of feasting. When I first read this years ago, the, the wise writer really messed me up because every time he mentioned something good, he's already mentioned something bad. Now he's saying it's better for me to be depressed than to be happy. What he's coming to is to let you know that all good things must come to an end. We have to tell our children, baby, I'm buying the food now, but all good things must come to an end. We have to teach our children that Zelle and, and cash shop and checkbooks ain't something that you just throw around and you get money from. Something has to go there before you get it. He says all good things got to come to end. And young people, your parents ought to be training you now that you ain't going to always live here, baby. You're going to be grown, gone, on your own, with your own home and your own money. 
And if you do stay here, you here to take care of me, not me to take care of you. He says, the end of a thing is better than the beginning of a thing. We got it so twisted in the 21st century and in the 20th century, we got it so twisted until we rejoice, we throw baby showers, and we ought to. We, we bring people in from out of state, and we ought to. People show how much they love us and they give us money, and then when somebody dies, they don't want to volunteer anything. No things. But the Bible says the end of a thing is better. So how does it deal with 2023? There are some people who are glad that 2023 is about to get out of here. Some people are glad that 2023 blessed us. Some people wish that they could stress out 2023 altogether. Some people are like Job, and they, they hadn't gone halfway down the road that Job went down, but they sound like Job. Job said, I cursed the day I was born. God, if I knew I was going to have to go through this, I wouldn't even want to be born. But the fact is, we serve the sovereign God. He knows what's best for us. We ought to pray, and we ought to constantly talk to God and, and in the midst of our prayer, we may bring up the same things over and over again. We must pray without ceasing. We must have something to pray about. But sooner or later, deep down in your heart, you ought to look back and say, Lord, I thank you for whatever you've done. Even as we wait, even as God rearranges our plan, God has rearranged some of our plans. Oh, man, if, if it was my way, if it was my way, this, this horse pastor would be more than just a soul man. If I had it my way, we would, we would ride down the side of this property on the east side, and when we, we get to the back, we would see homes just, just flooding this property. Where we are growing people and not snakes. If I had it my way, there would be a big old building that's divided into three phases in the back of the church. Just past the fellowship hall. If it was my way, I, I would have already had it by now. If it was my way, there would be a technology building that would set aside for just the STEAM program. On the other side of that technology building, it would be hydroponics and aquaponics. In the far back of that building, it would be for drones and, and robots. And children will be learning even on a better scale than they're learning on this campus now. If it was my way, we would never be crowded out. If it was my way, you, you may not know it, but if it was my way, we wouldn't have these chairs rearranged every Saturday. From where the Harpers are sitting, from where Sister Paul is sitting, all those chairs are taken up every Saturday. That whole back area becomes a robotic zone. If it was my way, that the little room we have over there that we, when we built, we thought it was going to be a big room for music and training of children. Let me tell you, if it was my way, that building that I visualized right behind that room will always be already be built. But guess what, Brother Stepto? God chose not to do it. Moment. For some reason, God is holding my vision for later. For some reason, God has the power, yet because he's God, God has the power to not only rearrange my vision, but to change my vision altogether. And we have to be all right with if I was to take a poll in the room, there would be some people that would tell me that, uh, you know, if I could choose where to live in this city, I live on the south side. If I could choose where to live in this city, I wouldn't be in Houston at all. 
There are some people who have this dream, even as young boys and young girls. I already got it in my head. I got a house that sits on a hill. I got a white picket fence around it with two fluffy dogs running in the yard. I got I got 2.5 children in the house, and I'm married happily ever after. But somewhere, it just didn't happen that way. So how do we handle God? How do we deal with him? Because, you know, we got to deal with God. Some people deal with God like, God, look, let me just tell you what I really feel. And they conclude they talk to their friend about it. Look, God, I can tell you anything. But one thing about it, when I talk to my daddy, my earthly daddy, I couldn't come in there and just say anything any kind of way. I, I never walked in the house. And said, Dad, I got something to talk to you about. I can't even imagine how that would end. But I do know the stamp would be present. The end. Brother O, Brother o Daddy didn't talk a lot. He watched. He looked. And when he cleared his throat, we knew all the other talking was over. Today's children tell parents, look, you go sit down somewhere. Today's children tell parents, I'm the mother now. You gonna do what I say now. Today's children have the audacity to tell, I'm going somewhere and I'll be back at this time. I'm telling you, I'm nearly 61 years old and when I go home, and mama said, don't dock that door, guess what, I sit down and look like I was when I was two. It's not a matter of whether or not I can do it. It's a matter of respect that was taught when I was before to. And I've seen a lot of boys, a lot of friends of mine die because mama said, don't leave. Daddy said, don't go. And they went. And the next call they got was from the sheriff department. March, March of this year, I went home to a funeral and they had this, this eating after the wake. We, I don't know what y'all call it. They had this eating after the wake and I went to Moorhead and it started storming really bad. And, and your mom said, well, when you get through, come on back home now. I don't know why she told me that, you know, I'm grown. I was 59 years old. She said, now when, when, when it's over, you come on home. I said, Mama, I'm grown, got a wife and children. I didn't say that. I, I just, you know, I just kind of talking to myself. But Mama said, come home. Now, here it is. I'm 59. Mama's almost 80. She says, come home. But I got some friends I want to see because I'm in town just now, just for a few minutes. I got some friends down in Belzona, then Silver City, and also down in Yazoo City. I want to run down. It's only 40 miles. It started storming and raining so badly until some people said, some mind told me. Let me tell you, two minds told me. The Holy Spirit told me and my mama told me. I was getting ready to take that left to go down to Yazoo City, and I had to go through Belzona and through Silver City to get to Yazoo City. But the rain was so treacherous, I took a right and went on back home. I woke up the next morning, Big C, in Silver City, right where I had to run into, right where I had to go through, was demolished. Wiped off the map with a hurricane, and it came in fast, and it left fast. The whole city wiped out. And I came within 30 miles of driving right into the hurricane, thinking it's just hard rain. No radio? Weather too bad to hear the radio. When you're driving and you're trying to watch the ground and trying to watch the road, and you don't need a radio in your ear. So no radio, I'm just driving in the rain. But mama said, and the Lord said, go back home. By the time Saturday got there, I rode through there and talked to the residents, and they had nothing. God has a way of protecting us when we're too foolish to even recognize what God is doing. Why haven't God blessed me the way I want to be blessed? Now, God, I, I've been faithful. 
I was faithful to through 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 the tornado. I was I was faithful through the the epidemic. Lord, I was faithful, and you still haven't given us what we ask. It's because God can see further down the road than we would ever imagine. God can see further down the road than we ever can dream of. God, God chose not to kill me at birth with a heart condition because he knew December 31st, 2023, I would give him honor, give him glory, and remind you that the end is coming. I, I supposed to have been out of here. I suppose I didn't, I, don't, I wasn't fit to live, wasn't ready to die. I was messed up. And let my brothers and my sister tell you, and I was ugly. We have to understand that life is real, but death is coming. And it doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are, you need to get prepared today because there's a stamp. And the stamp is the end. The text declares that it's better to have the begin the ending of a thing than the beginning. Our church is new beginning, and every year we have a new beginning. Someone asks, why isn't it new beginnings? Because whatever God does, he does it well. God does it, and when God gives us a new beginning, we have to take advantage of it because we realize that the end is coming. I just want to say to you, while you're looking forward to the end, and as you are looking forward to life, just remember the end is coming, and as you're looking forward to the end, keep your focus. Keep your focus. Don't get sidetracked by stuff. Keep your focus. Don't get sidetracked by people. Keep your focus. Remember your purpose. Remember your purpose on planet Earth is to glorify God. Remember your focus. Remember to stay focused. Remember your purpose. You have a purpose, and God has given you a purpose, and that purpose is to glorify him. Glorify him with your thoughts. Glorify him with your state of mind. Glorify him with your actions. Don't sneak around. Don't do things you think you're getting away with. Stay focused and keep your purpose. Remember your purpose. Your purpose is to glorify God. People think their purpose on planet Earth is to be a dish digger, an engineer, a nurse, a doctor. That's not your purpose. Your purpose is whatever you do in your life. Make sure that God can get the glory from it. If you can't use the gifts that God has given you, to purpose and glorify him, you are wasting your gift. You've heard, you've heard it. If you don't use it, you lose it. I want to add a caveat to that. If you don't use it for the Lord, you will lose it. There are people in this room that got great minds. Our children are brilliant. They have to find themselves doing something other than watching a screen. We cannot confine our lives to a screen. We got to keep our focus, remember our purpose, respect ourselves. Respect yourself. Young girl, say something for the honeymoon. Respect yourself. Matter of fact, say the honey for the honeymoon. Respect yourself. Anything that's valuable, anything that's valuable is covered up, is hidden. Let everybody know that you respect yourself and keep it covered up. Keep your focus. Remember your purpose. Respect yourself. Honor others. Honor. Honor other people. Honor. Honor other people. Everybody is important. My brother-in-law, my brother-in-law in Mississippi, every time I see him on video, he, he's on video talking about, I'm here with my favorite member. Then you see him on a video two minutes later. I'm here with my favorite member. 
You see him next month. I'm here with my favorite member. And everybody is special. And every, let me just throw this out here. All of you all are my favorite members. All of you visitors are my favorite visitors. Because everybody is special. That's why when a child approaches me, I drop to my knees. I look him or her dead in their eyes because you're special to me. I'm giving you my undivided attention. I want you to know that you are beautifully and wondrously made. Great are the handiworks of God. You are special and God has made you that way. Honor other people. Honor other people. It doesn't matter what they have on. It doesn't matter Someone walk in this room that hadn't had a shower like we have, usher him to the front and he's my special guest. If someone comes in here and is too tight, too short, and too low, bring him up front. Sister David is not going to jump on me about it. These are my special guests. They're my special guests because you cannot clean the fish until you catch the fish. Always honor other people. One thing that the senior saints never put up with and never gave to was a disrespectful child. So whenever I showed up at the Markham Missionary Baptist Church or the St. James Missionary Baptist Church, they said, oh, is that Rosie boy back there? And they, these old people would take a mad dash and shake my hand. And every time they shook my hand, they laughed at it. People don't give to disrespectful people. You have to have some honor, and you have to honor other people. You respect yourself. You honor other people. You study your Bible. Study your Bible. Uh, some of you already have it. We have our Bible listening or Bible reading. It's so short this year, you can read it. You can actually study it and spend time with it. Then you got your Sunday school lesson, and then we will have our Bible study. You have no excuse this year. It's not rushing you and pushing you. Study your Bible. Spend time with your Bible. Set aside some time to spend with God and God's word. Spend time with your Bible. Study your Bible. Keep your focus. Remember your purpose. Respect yourself. Honor others. Obey God. As we move into 2024, this is over. I'm going to tell you, you can't, songwriter has had some hope, but it wasn't good hope. If I could turn back, now I knew y'all weren't always in church. If I could turn back the hands of time, let me tell you, yesterday is past. Yesterday is gone. What you didn't do and what God didn't do, forget it. It's in history now. But the good thing about it, we are writing our history that future generations will read about. Future generations going to read about January 6th. They're going to read about it. Just like right now, we're reading about the 60s, and they can't stop us from reading it. Matter of fact, it's in my heart. We have to make sure we obey God. And when we obey God, God blesses us even to the end. My challenge to you today, my dear, be committed. Just, just be committed. Just be committed. Let me tell you, every night I go home to the same address. Every night I'm looking at the same pretty woman. Every night for the last 23 and a half years, every night we didn't go by two separate houses Matter of fact, I said, if, if you get to a point where, where you want to sleep on the couch, I hope the couch is big enough for both of us. Because you stuck like Chuck. Because love and infatuation will get you married. But commitment will keep you married. 
The reason, reason why people have two different lives and doing things two different ways is because there's a little boy locked up in me and there's a little girl locked up in her. And when the little boy can't get his way, he throws a temper tantrum. Running around, falling and kicking and screaming and, and, ah, and then the little girl follows after him. But when you're committed and you remember what you said, better and for worse, I don't know who would do some crazy stuff like that. Now, I'm doing all right as I am, and I'm going to pledge my life to somebody for better or for worse? Brother, does that make sense to you? If you if you got a woman sitting next to you, don't ask me right now. Call call me up later. I'm gonna pledge to you that I'm gonna take care of you in sickness and in health. I'm gonna pledge to you. Now, what sense does it make? I'm gonna pledge to you that I'm rich and I'm gonna take care of poor woman. Take care of you in riches and in poor. But that's what happens when you're committed. We have to teach our young people how to get on jobs and stay on jobs. Be committed to something, be, be committed. How to move in a house and stay in a house. Stop chasing waterfalls. Every time I look up, I'm chasing waterfalls. Every time I look up, I'm changing my mind and changing my life. One woman woke up the other day and looked at her husband and say, you know, the Lord told me I married the wrong guy. And I said to her, I said, well, the Lord honored your request. You chose. As a matter of fact, you couldn't do without it. You on the phone falling asleep at 2 o'clock in the morning. You get upset because he didn't call you today. And then you get upset because he didn't stop by the house. You get upset because he didn't put your picture on the social media. And now you're talking about you got the wrong one. Well, live with it, baby. It's about commitment. Everybody needs to be committed in a godly way where nothing can change. One of the sorest things I see in the church is that there's a lack of commitment. Commitment, commitment. Be committed because whatever lifestyle you, you have, other places, you're going to have the same lifestyle everywhere. Be committed. Be committed. You know, I, I, I sent out the text the other day, said yesterday I guess it was, and said, hey, everybody who's finished there, there are uh, the Bible reading and journaling. It's reading and journaling. Everybody who's completed their Bible reading and journaling, send in, send in to Sister David, let her know which quarters you, you have finished. Boy, my heart leaped for joy. Now, when I get with the pastors and they ask me, how did your year go for the church? I said, man, you know what? We did Bible listening and Bible journaling, and 98% of the folks participated. Some folk did one quarter, some folk did two quarters, some folk did three quarters, some folk did all four quarters, some people just did four quarters. I am just happy as a pastor that we have committed folks. Y'all know pastors have show and tell, right? Because we want to better ourselves and better each other. We have show and tell. So when I have my show and tell, I'm going to take a stack of these big old green books y'all wrote y'all stuff in. And I'm going to say, I ain't got nothing to say. Look at mine. I say, look, look, man, I got 50 books here, and all 50 of them got writing in it because our people were faithful and committed to the word of God. And then I'm going to say, look, Pastor Lee, not here. Pastor McClendon, that's what I got this time. I got it in writing. 98% of the congregation has accomplished something in our Bible listening. Well, y'all bring your books. So I can look good in February. Bring your book so I can walk in the door with two big boxes. But all I know I bought 50 books and passed them out. And I'm willing, I'm, I'm ready to walk in Pastor Johnny Lee's study and just throw it on the table with all five preachers sitting there. So this is mine. This is what we accomplished. We didn't get a whole lot of thousands of dollars, but we got the word in our. We got committed people. We don't have
have the church full of people. We don't have the church full online either. We don't have a whole lot of businesses that's coming in and out of the door. But one thing I can brag about, we have commitments to the word of God. We are a word church. And I'm going to do my show and tell like never before. In the past, I would just kind of sit in the corner and watch and listen and take notes. But 2024, I'm going to show them what we have for 2023. Be committed. Be committed to the Lord. Be committed to your church. Be committed to service. And then the end will be better than the beginning. We pray to God to do great things, but we have to participate in what God is doing. It doesn't just fall out the, the air anymore. It, it's not going to be manner. We got to go to work. We have to participate. And let's just say you didn't get through and you didn't do it and you just had, a, had so many things coming up. That's why we're only doing the New Testament and you can go back and um, fill in at least your New Testament. So you're going to have two more Sundays before the next certificates go out and before I can do some bragging on you. So second Sunday, everybody bring me their books and I'm going to walk over there. I may not wait to the meeting. The look, Pastor Lee, call Pastor McClendon, call Pastor Rose, call Pastor Booker. And I'll show up when I get there and tell them I left them on your doorstep. Matter of fact, I'm going to get the guy to let me in your office and I'm going to call you and take a picture and call you and say, this is what's in your office. And then I'm going to just take the mic and mic drop. Done deal. And they go, how did you get them to do that? I said, they're faithful to the Lord. They're committed. They love the Lord because when people love the Lord, they love the Lord's word. And when you love the Lord's word, you don't let stuff get in the way of the Lord's word. And we're faithful. God has blessed us. Let's make our ending better than our beginning. Don't lie. Don't steal. Don't cheat. Don't backbite. Make your ending better than the devil thought we were over. We, the devil thought the ending was here when he killed Jesus. Mean men murdered Jesus Christ. They killed him. It was the death of an innocent man for guilty people. He died on Calvary. They killed him. They nailed him tight. They killed him. They raised him high. They killed Jesus. And after he was dead, they pierced him in his side to make sure he was dead. They said, the end. Somebody here today feel like this is the end for them. But Jesus set forth the greatest example. They laid him in a borrowed tomb. The earth couldn't hold him. Death couldn't keep him. The devil could not bind him. Early that third day morning, with all power in heaven and earth in his hand, Jesus rose from the dead. They had stamped the end, but he made the ending better than the beginning. Early that third day morning, he rose with all power. He literally got up from the dead. Not only did he get up from the dead, he rose in me. And because he's in me, I have power. Paul says, the greatest one is in you than in all the world. And that same Jesus is still making a difference on our behalf. He's making our ending greater than our beginning. That same Jesus, when we do mess up, when we do lie, when we do fall short, 
and we confess our sins to God, Jesus makes intercession for us and said, God, give them another chance. And because he's making intercessions for us, God throws our sins into the sea of forgiveness, never to rise again against, against us. That same Jesus, one of these days, just like he left here on a cloud, one of these days, he's going to come back on a cloud. You see the athletes rides in Bentleys and Porsche, Ferraris, BMWs. Entertainers riding whatever they want to ride in, but Jesus is coming back on a cloud. That's how we know when they are fake Jesus, they're false prophets. Because David Koresh didn't come on a cloud. We know, we know, we know that these guys who think they're somebody, they are not the Christ because it didn't come on a cloud. Revelation says, that, Revelation 4, that I looked and I saw heaven, I saw stuff like never before. It's because he's looking at heaven. That same Jesus that saw the four beastly creatures, the same Jesus that saw the 24 elders. He's going to come on a cloud and stop in midair. And those of us who believe this story of his death, burial, and resurrection, we will be caught up in midair. And, and Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, we will forever be with the Lord. And we're going to praise him all through eternity. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to try Jesus. You cannot leave 2023 without committing to Jesus. You cannot afford to leave 2023 without committing to a church home. You cannot afford to leave 2023 without a deeper commitment to Christ. The door of the church is open. Will you come? Try Jesus. I want to know. I just need to know. I got to know. I really love you. I just need to know. The door is open. Will you come? The door, the door is open. This is your moment, this is your invitation. Will you try Jesus? I just want to know. I just have to know. I just need to know. As a matter of fact, I gotta know. Have you been washed? Have you been clean? Have you have you gone through the blood? Are you your soul's been really Have your sins been washed away? Yeah, I know. I want to know. I just need to know. I just got to know. 
If you've never received Jesus Christ as your Savior, will you bow your head with me and invite him into your life? Just believing this simple story that Jesus died on Calvary, that he rose from the dead. If you'd like to go to heaven, if you'd like to be saved right now, as we are in these fleeing moments of 2023, Bow your head with me and invite Jesus Christ into your life. Just repeat after me these simple words. Just say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. I just got to know. Just really need to know. Are you yeah, I love you so. I just need to know. Amen. Won't we thank God for who He is and what He's already got? We serve the awesome and the amazing God. He is, He is God all by Himself. It is time for us to uh, give by way of tithes and offering, as well as uh, Jesus' birthday. Where is the box? Where is the box? For Jesus' birthday. The, the blue, the red box for Jesus' birthday. We are celebrating Jesus' birthday by giving unto him. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand. You may need two, one for Jesus' birthday, one for your tithes and your offering. Uh, just ask for those, and those will be given unto you. Bless him, bless him. Bless his holy name. We are still celebrating the birthday of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And everything, all, everything that's in the bless him. Thank you. Bless his, bless his holy name. He has done He's done great things. He has done great things. He has done great, great things. Bless him, bless him. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. If you want to give electronically, you can do so by giving to Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. If you want to give by way of mail, you can mail your gifts to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas. Seven seven four five nine. Father God, we thank you, Father, for this privilege of giving. We thank you for every gift. We thank you for every giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank you. If you need an envelope, raise your hand and you will be served. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Bless this side to stand. Follow first impressions from the rear to the front. 
bring forth the Lord's tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. And the Lord, that is with them, that makes me so. Well, Let's just uh, to stand. We follow first impressions from the rear to the front. Bring forth the Lord's tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. <laughs> He has saved my soul. He has saved my soul. He has saved my soul. Bless him, bless him. So, bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Father God, we thank you for these gifts and these givers. In Jesus' name, we ask you to bless us. Amen. I ask those of you who are sitting in the fellowship, in the sanctuary, take your phone and see if you can scan that QR code for me and see what it come out just perfectly for me. Will you do that for me? See if you can scan that QR code and see if it will give you what you need. If you would do that. That will help me very much. See if you can scan it. And once you get it on there, keep it on there. Come back in. Amen. Is it working? It works from here. Amen. That's good. Oh, my head is in the way. Well, let me move my head out of the way. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, man. Everybody scanning. That's the 2024 business cards. <laughs> Printing is a thing of old. That's the 2024 business card. Hey, man. Brother C, I need to see you before you leave, Brother C. I need to see Brother Carter before he leaves. They're getting called in the principal's office. Brother Carter and Brother C. Amen. Father God, we thank you, Father, for what you do. Uh, Braylon is our person today. with your announcements. New Year's Eve service. Please join us as we have an in-person New Year's Eve service tonight starting at 8 o'clock p.m. Let's bring the new year in worshiping the Almighty God together. 2024 NBC slogan. Are you interested in winning the 2024 NBC church slogan? Please submit your slogans by today to Sister Carolyn Davis. The winner of the contest will receive $25 and will be announced next Sunday. Bible listening and journaling for 2024. We will engage in Bible listening for the year of 2024 for the New Testament. If you did not finish your Bible listening and journaling from this year, please continue to complete your journal. Bible listening and journaling. Congratulations to all the Bible listening and journaling scholars. Certificates of completion for each quarter will be given on, out on January 14th. December's birthdays. Next month, we have Lou Irvin on the 8th. Please remember those on our prayer request. Davis, Patrice 
Kelsey, the Brand family, Patrick Brown, Pacheco family, the B family, Kevin and Ka Ka Katrina Whitlock, Maria Lewis, Servin and Garcia family, Laura Khan, Fatima Grandos, Beverly Wallace, Maria Carey Spencer, Malari Williams, Vivian Aslaha, Ed Brennan and family, Forrest Bridgeworth, Jacqueline Torres, Doris Bellis, Raymond Alfred Jr., Al Brinson, Terrence Miller, Labors for the Harvest and World Peace. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Brenda. For those of you who were not present yesterday, uh, last week, we have a gift for you. See me over here, uh, right to this side to pick up your gift immediately after service. We have a gift for you, gift of joy and strength. And those of you who do not have your your daily Bible listening or reading, uh, please pick those up from the ushers in the rear. You have your daily Bible listening and reading that begins on January 1. January 1, and this year we're doing the New Testament only. We're doing the New Testament, so you can fill in your book. So February comes, I can take them in and, and brag about it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God. Let's pray. Father God, we ask you to bless everyone who's listed on this prayer list, Father God. We ask you, Father God, to do a miraculous work as only you can. Heal, deliver, encourage, Father. We pray, Father God, that you bless us, Father God, as we bring these before you. Bless every household, bless every family, and bless every need. Lord, we ask you, Father God, to continue to walk with them and show them that you are God and you're God alone. Bless them to believe that you are God and bless them to believe that you are able. And Lord, we ask you, Father God, bless them to continue to pray and talk to you about all things. And Lord, we ask you to keep the glory, all the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank God for, for this, this privilege, this privilege of prayer. Amen. So uh, is there any other thing that I'm missing? All, all my clear? Our visitors, if you will stand, if you're visiting with us, stand and say hello to us. Tell us who you are if you're visiting with us. If you are a visitor with us. If you're not, if you don't stand as a visitor, we take conclusion that you are a member. And we will give you the form today to fill out to make sure that you secure your spot as a member of the New Beginning Church. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for being a part of our service today. We are meeting here tonight. We're meeting here at 8 p.m. We'll be here tonight at 8 p.m. It's our watch night service. And we should be out of here by 930 because old folk need to be at home at 10 o'clock. Amen. Especially during these days. Amen. And, uh, Sister Davis said, I need to be at home. I remember daddy, and you can stand to be dismissed. Daddy used to go places, and, and mama said, You need to have your old self at home. So Sister Davis is walking right in my mama's footsteps, and I need to be at home. So we'll meet here tonight at 8 p.m., and uh, we'll be out no later than 9.30. And you can be at home by 10 o'clock. Amen. You can be back at home. Thank you so much for being a part of our service. Amen. God, God be with you. God, God be with you. I'm singing God be with you until we meet again. God be with you. God, I be with you. I sing this song. Be with you until we meet again. Amen. Bless the name of Jesus. Uh, Sister Davis needs to see all choir members, all musicians, immediately after this service. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy, your grace. We thank you, Lord, that our ending is better than our beginning. We thank you, Father, for blessing our lives and keeping us focused and in your will. 
We ask you to bless us as we go, that we, Father God, will keep our focus, that we will remember our purpose. Bless us, Lord, that we will obey God. Bless us to study our word. Bless us to respect ourselves, Lord, and bless us, Lord, to always honor others. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him the only wise and only true God, be glory, be dominion, and power. Until we meet again, let us sing together. Amen. God bless you. You are dismissed. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus said, in I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 13.